In this video I'll be taking a look at this machine. It is a Hewlett Packard 9830A and whether it's a computer or a desktop calculator depends on who you ask. Uh, HP themselves refer to it as a desktop calculator. Um, other sellers and users tended to refer to it as a desktop computer. And the real reason that uh, HP referred to it as a desktop calculator was at the time when this was being manufactured most companies were going through a lot of red tape to buy computer systems and so by defining this as a desktop calculator HP could allow would-be customers to directly access it and purchase it without having to go through all the red tape that their company would require them to if they were designating it as a computer. I don't own this um, at the moment it doesn't work so the idea is to try and repair it and get it up and running. One of the things with this is it is an incredibly complicated machine. Although it is essentially a computer it doesn't really have a microprocessor in it. It is a discrete logic level microprocessor system. That is it uh, has a, uh, a series of logic boards that together um, create the functionality of a relatively simple computer system. Um, but without using an actual processor. Uh, and because of that, the schematics run to uh, well over 40 pages. And um, as I say, it's a very complex um, uh, machine. So the first thing I'm going to try and do is switch it on. Now, I wouldn't normally recommend switching these on if you've found one and it hasn't been switched on for a while. Uh, the first step is to take all the cards out and start reinserting them starting with the power supply. Unfortunately because of the nature of the supply in this quite often the uh, pass regulation transistors fail by going short circuit and for example if the plus 5 volt regulator transistor goes short because of the way the circuits arranged it will put around 15 volts DC through all the logic boards and most of this is TTL so as you can imagine it will destroy pretty much every device in the machine and there are probably the best parts of uh, between 500 and 1000 devices in this particular machine it may sound a lot but you'll see just how many boards there are in this when we open it so step one is our cell trans switch it on so it's switched on I have got it plugged in and it does nothing at all. There's no sound. I can't even hear a, a, a transformer bumping. So uh, what we'll do first is spin it round so we can access the back and uh, see if there are any fuses we can check. Okay, so obviously we're now looking at the back. I'll pull the mains cable out and we'll check the two fuses. Not quite sure at this point exactly what each fuse does. We'll have a look at the schematic in a little while. So that fuse is fine. Look at the second one. And that one's fine as well. So next thing is we'll pop the cover off, take out all the boards and uh, investigate the power supply. I've removed the screws from the top cover and I think it just slides off. So I'll put that to one side. And as you can see there's not much spare room inside this thing. It uh, is very densely populated. We'll have a look at the schematics but there are a lot of boards in here. Uh, there are some more underneath this area. So I'll pop all the boards out. So I don't want to start testing the supply with them in. Hopefully there's been no damage to them, but um, if there hasn't, I don't want to uh, push our luck and uh, possibly damage boards that are currently working. So, as far as I know, I have to remove this. Okay, 
not quite sure how the front board's supposed to come out. Yeah. Okay, so what I'll do now is pop all these boards out. Uh, I'll do that off camera because it'll be fairly dull watching me um, pull these out. Um, I'll also pull out the power supply board and we'll check the uh, power going into that before we do anything else. Okay, so I've pulled all the boards out. Um, out of interest, if ever you're working on one of these Zero HP machines, they had a very nice system for identifying the boards. They had a very common kind of layout with this type of machine where they had a, a big baseboard or a big motherboard and then uh, multiple slots for the cards that they plugged in. And um, if you do take the cards out, although the manuals tend to be fairly good, so these are actually colour coded. If you look at the two tabs that are used to extract the card, you notice that one's brown, one's yellow, and that's a unique combination for the cards in this machine. So I happen to know it goes here, but if you look at this end, then it's yellow, and although you can't see it, the guide at this end is brown. And as I said, that's unique for each card. So you, not only can you not put them in the wrong place, but also you can't put them r the wrong way around as long as you adhere to the uh, color coding of the tabs. Okay, so I now have those removed. Uh, plug the mains cable back in. Obviously, if you're doing this, be careful because at this point uh, there is mains in here. And what we'll do now is uh, examine the uh, power going to the power supply card. Obviously I've taken the power supply card out and so the only power we should have going to the uh, motherboard now is going in through this connector which again you can't see it but it's the connector that's coming from this assembly um, and that goes through the motherboard and into the power supply card through this edge connector. That edge connector is this one down here. There are two edge connectors on the power supply card. It's a full length card. And this manual is quite nice in that it gives you designations for uh, each card. As I say, there are quite a few cards in this. There are several pages showing you these cards. It also gives you the pinout um, functions for each card. So the one we're interested in is uh, this one. And it will also tell you the uh, connections for the cards. If we look at this particular card, we're looking at the uh, power supply card. So it's actually this way around. And the connector we're interested in is N51A, which is at this end. It's a double-sided card. So on one side, you probably can't see this, but on one side it's designated 1 through 22. On the other side, A through Z. I'm not quite sure which particular ones are missing out of that, but um, as long as you count upwards, then uh, in theory should be fine. So what I'm going to do is check for the AC power coming into this card. And as you can see here, if we take this one, for example, uh, the power comes into pins uh, A and B and C and D and that should give us the, um, the voltage coming in across this particular winding. So if we look at uh, the voltage between AB and CD, so, as I said, the edge connector we're interested in is the one at this end, and the letters are on the left-hand side. So now power up the machine. should now be on. And I'll measure between A and D Put it into AC volts. And there's nothing there. Try B and C and there's nothing there either. So this is actually all one winding. Uh, it's centre tapped with uh, two overwound um, secondaries, so it's centre tapped, then you're getting a plus minus uh, 17 volts, and then up here we're getting another plus minus reference to the centre tap. So, in other words, these are all effectively um, bridge rectifiers, each supplying a different rail. So, we have four power rails by the look of it. Um, 
but also if we're not getting power here then we won't get anything at all so I'll just try these two connections that's E and F Again, nothing whatsoever there. So what I'll do now is take um, this assembly out. We'll have a look at the actual connections coming from the um, on-off switch and see why power's not getting through to the um, the back plane. What I'll do first, just to check we're getting power in, th in through the mains uh, connector, is if we look at the input, we'll see it's directly in parallel with uh, two auxiliary supply sockets on the back. So I'll just see if there's anything coming out of those to make sure we do have power going into the machine. And we have 242 volts AC, which is uh, correct for this area. Okay, so we're getting power going into the machine. It's just not making it out of this block onto the um, back plane. So as I say, I'll take this out and then get back on camera and we'll see if we can figure out where it's getting lost. Okay, so I've dropped the rear cover down and uh, immediately you can see we have uh, an ominous sign. It's a fairly extensive uh, flash mark on the bottom of the chassis. That's directly underneath where the uh, mains input um, connector is. So either there's been a, a very significant power surge and it's caused uh, arcing at the uh, input filter or more likely the input filter itself has failed and it's gone short circuit inside and just uh, uh, blown the base out. We'll check to see if we are getting any continuity at all when this is wired up if the main switch is on which it is then we should get continuity between these two points and we don't Or between that one either. So it looks like the mains uh, power switch has failed as well which is not that surprising quite often you get these large uh, power surges. If it goes through the main switch then it uh, usually takes that out as well. It is a bit strange that um, the main switch is on the inboard side of this filter so it's possible something else has caused the, uh, the filter to fail and the main switch to fail. Possibly we have a, a filter capacitor that's gone uh, dead short, which is uh, not that unusual. It's not showing as short there, but um, sometimes they just go intermittently short and then the power surge blows them back open again. There's no signs of uh, arcing or burning on this that I can see. So the next thing I'll do is take out the um, power switch. I'll have to remove the keyboard cover to do that and then we'll see uh, how the power switch itself looks. If that's blackened and burnt then um, obviously we need to look a bit deeper into the machine. It's possible that there's a, a short in the mains transformer but we'll um, work our way through from the main socket and see which uh, parts have failed. Okay so I've removed the main switch and we'll test that first to see if it's uh, faulty. Um, oddly the keyboard assembly wasn't plugged into the motherboard which is a bit of an ominous sign. Uh, also the plastic uh, parts around the keyboard had had a bit of a, uh, a beating so some of those will need repairing. I also had a quick look at the cards that uh, I've taken out and some do appear to have uh, had a power surge going through them. There are signs of some damaged tracks so they will need repairing. Um, but the first thing to do is get the power supply up and running with the correct power rails. So first step is to see if the switch can be recovered. Um, obviously trying to find a, a match for this switch would be quite difficult. So let's just see first if it can be repaired. That would make the repair uh, a lot easier. Okay, so that's reading 36 ohms. No. So the side that was in use is obviously burnt out. I'm just wondering if the side that was not in use can be um, brought into use and then just simply switch the or flip the switch around. I 
think with a bit of cleaning that side would be okay. And we'll check the same on this side. It's unfortunate that one's open circuit. So what I'll do, I'll tear this switch apart and see if the contacts can be cleaned or if they've been completely destroyed. Uh, I won't do it on camera because it is a bit of a, you know, a fiddle doing these, but um, if I find anything interesting then I'll, I'll video it. Okay, so I've dismantled the switch, but unfortunately it is beyond repair. The um, plastic pieces inside are damaged, but also the two contacts have uh, completely disappeared. Um, just a few lumps of metal in there, so um, it looks like it was quite a significant uh, surge current that went through it. Um, so I'll need to try and find a replacement switch. Unfortunately, these are a very strange size. The, they're only 8mm wide, and uh, normally switches like this are uh, 9.5 so uh, it might be difficult finding a replacement and the problem here is that the front moulding that the switch protrudes through is moulded specifically for that uh, size and shape of switch and in addition it is uh, bolted to the inside chassis so uh, it might be quite difficult finding uh, an exact replacement for that. Uh, but I'll come back to that another time, what I'm going to do for now is just bypass the switch and that will at least allow me to get the unit uh, powered up and see if it's actually worth attempting a repair in the first place. So what I'll do now is get the main chassis back on the bench, we'll take the main socket out and see if we can find a replacement for that. So I've unbolted the rear power panel and uh, sure enough the power connector does uh, read bad. Um, unfortunately it's riveted in so it's not just an easy fix to uh, and bolt it and put a new one in. Uh, in addition it's one of the weird uh, side um, entry type uh, sockets that has a filter built in. I have seen these before on the uh, Fluke equipment and they're very hard to get hold of so it might be a case of uh, having to fit a standard socket and put a filter in somewhere else inside the machine. Uh, the rest of it doesn't read too bad here. The main issue, however, seems to be on the actual motherboard. I don't know if this is going to come out on camera. I'll shine a torch in, so hopefully we can get a clearer look. Um, but there is corrosion on this um, connector. This is the connector that the transformer um, connects directly to. And you can see there's quite a lot of debris in here, but it looks like there's water damage on the board in this corner. So. Um, that could well be the original cause of the problem. Um, I need to get a closer look at that and see if the transformer's okay and then see how much damage been, has been done to the motherboard. There's also signs of water damage along this edge so it looks like maybe some water's got into here which is what caused the original problem. Um, but what I'll do next is uh, clean up the motherboard, see how extensive the damage is and then see if there's a possibility of finding a replacement for the power connector. Uh, as I said, this is not my machine, so I'll need to contact the owner and see what he wants to do with this. Um, it's not looking too promising. The, the power surge, as I said, seems to have gone into some of the boards. Now, they will be repairable. It's just whether or not um, it's feasible to do that. Also, if the ROM boards are damaged, then and they will be extremely difficult to uh, to rectify. But I'll discuss it with him and see what he wants to do um, and get back on this on the uh, next video.